The purpose of this clip is to uh, give you some intuition of what the determinant of a matrix represents. To start out with, I will just uh, state a particular matrix here, 2 by 2 matrix. That dimension is going to be important. We call it H and it has diagonal elements H11 and H22 and off diagonals H12 and H21. And we shall call the determinant of this matrix um, as follows this in H inside the vertical lines the determinant of H and it's calculated in the case of this 2 by 2 matrix as H11 times H22 the this is the product of the diagonal elements minus H12 times h21 which is the product of the two off diagonal elements so in this case we are dealing with a two by two matrix and this formula is really specific to that case if you have higher dimensional matrices then the determinant the calculation of the determinant is more complex so we will focus on the two by two case here let's continue with an example and we'll start with a numerical example and then we'll look at the interpretation the graphical interpretation here's our h matrix uh, with these uh, elements so let's just apply the formula for the determinant as it is written down here. It's the product of the two diagonals, so 4 times 2 minus the product of the off diagonals, which happen, both of them happen to be 0. So the result is 8. The determinant of this matrix is 8. So now let's move to the graphical interpretation of this. Let's look at a coordinate system. And uh, we shall call the um, axis of this uh, system x1 being the horizontal axis and x2 being the vertical axis. And we'll now represent the first column as x1 values, the second as x2 values. So this red vector is a vector in that coordinate system and the green two values represent a vector. The red vector has a coordinate of 4 on the x1 and 0 on the x2 axis, so it's this red vector. The green vector has a 0 value for x1 and a value of 2 for x2, so it's this green vector coinciding with the vertical axis. So if we now draw the parallelogram that is spanned by these two vectors, on the two vectors describe a parallelogram. And if we now look at the area of that parallelogram, that is 2 times 4. So the area here is 8. The fact that the size of the area is equal to the determinant is not a coincidence. Turns out that the determinant is indeed related to the size of the area of the parallelogram described by the two vectors in H. Not exactly equal, we'll see by exploring more examples how really it is related. So here's our second example. All we're going to change is the value, is the sign of one of, the of one of the diagonal terms. And if we calculate the determinant of this matrix, we now get an area of a uh, value of minus eight. So how does that relate to an area? How can an area be minus eight? So therefore, we already see that determinant isn't exactly the area of the parallelogram. So let's draw these two vectors again, the 4, 0 vector, so a value of x1 of 4 and 0 of x2, and a 0, negative 2 vector, so we have negative 2 on the x2 axis and 0 on the x1 axis. So these are our two vectors. Let's uh, sketch the parallelogram described by these two vectors, and 
the size of the area is of course again 8 because we have one axis the size of 2, the length of 2 and the other uh, side the length of 4 so the area is again 8 but now the determinant as we calculated it is negative 8. So from this we perhaps get the idea that in some sense the determinant is related to some signed version of the area of the parallelogram described by the two vectors in H. In what sense it is the signed area, so sometimes we'll have a positive and sometimes we'll have a negative area, is not so important for uh, this particular um, clip. So and I'll uh, leave that open. We will now look at two more examples, one of which will be a very interesting special case. But that will be the last example. So let's look at the next example. Here's our H matrix. And we will calculate the determinant uh, as normal product of diagonal terms minus product of off diagonals. That's 6. So let's represent our two vectors again in the x1, x2 space. The first vector is the 4, 2 vector. So a value of 4 on the x1 scale and 2 on the x2. So here's our point and this is the vector. And our second vector has 1 on x1 and 2 on x2. So it's this point and here's our vector. Now let's sketch the parallelogram described by these two vectors. That's this one. And the area is this sort of um, shaded sort of area. So it's not so obvious again what the um, area is, but turns out it's just 6. It's the value of the determinant. In this case it's positively signed area. So perhaps from the last example you can see already the direction in which we are going. Here is our next example. H as this value and we calculate the determinant. Product of diagonal minus product of off diagonal is zero. So what area has the size of zero? Let's represent our two vectors again. The vector 4, 2, that is the same vector as before. 4 on the x1, 2 on the x2 axis. Here's the point and here's our vector. And our second vector, 2 on x1 and 1 on x2. So that vector is here. And you can already see what's happening. What I'll now do is I'll again describe the parallelogram, or better try to describe a parallelogram, because all these vectors are on one line. And of course the area described by this so-called parallelogram or extreme parallelogram is zero. So this example, in some sense extreme example, gives us very important insight. So we'll first formulate it for the specific 2x2 two two case we were looking at for a 2x2 two two matrix. The determinant of that matrix is zero if the two-dimensional object that is described by the vectors in that matrix collapses to a one-dimensional object. So from, we're going from two to one dimension. Potentially we have a two-dimensional object but the two vectors are happen to be such that the object ends up being a one-dimensional object. So you can see in what sense this is a special case. Okay, and that's very important. It turns out that this description of a special case generalizes to higher dimensional matrices. So imagine we are having 
a k-dimensional matrix, we're always talking about square matrices, then the same statement is true, then the k-dimensional object described by these vectors will reduce to at most k minus 1 dimensions if the determinant of that matrix is zero. So also in the higher dimensional case a matrix, a square matrix with a determinant is zero has some special characteristics.